Omwere Buen Samaritano, God bless you this beautiful Sunday morning, October 18th, where we come together again via Facebook in each of our homes or wherever we are to gather in spirit and in our hearts to join together to pray for one another and to share the Word of God. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind us that next week, Sunday, October 25th, Lord willing, we will be returning to in-person worship in our sanctuary. I want to assure everyone that we will continue to take the utmost precaution to keep everyone healthy and to keep everyone safe. So we will continue to social distance, we will continue to wear face masks, and we will continue to have our sanitizing protocol in place. For those of you who choose to stay at home and worship with us from home, again we will continue to share our services from our sanctuary live. And so we just look forward to welcoming each of you into our time of worship and prayer and song beginning next week from the sanctuary. In the meantime, please know that you are being prayed for, that we love you, and that we miss you. I have enjoyed talking to so many of you this last week, and if you haven't heard from me yet, I will be making more calls this week and getting in touch with you as well. But I want to share how comforting it has been, how strengthening it has been to share the love of God and to share the peace of God with one another in just hearing familiar voices. So please know that you are prayed for, that you are loved, and that you are missed. And I've certainly been blessed by talking to so many of you this week. As we continue to press on, which has been our series for the month of of October, we continue to press on today. And today's word is is found in the book of Exodus chapter 33 and we are going to be reading from verse 12 through 19 in just a few moments but before we do that I want you to pray with me I want to invite us to pray together for all of our church family and friends for those who have been going through a season of illness or a season of grief or loss or a difficult season we want to lift you up in prayer today we want you to know that your church family is praying for you So let us pray together, let us give God thanks together, and then we will share in the word of God together. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father and precious Lord, we thank you so much once again for the opportunity to gather today in spirit and in our hearts to worship you, to share in your word, and to pray together, to lift one another in prayer today. Lord God, I want to thank you for our church, for Omwere Buen Samaritano. I want to thank you for this beautiful day that you have made and that you have given us. I want to thank you that in the midst of everything, You have kept us, Lord God. You have sustained us. Lord God, you have brought healing to us and comfort to us and and strength to us and your peace to us. And so so today, Lord God, we just want to give you praise. We just want to give you glory. And we want to open our hearts and our minds and our spirits and our bodies that you may fill us once again with your love, your comfort, your strength, your hope, and your peace as we continue to press on. Lord God, this morning speak to us through your word as we are reminded that we are known by name, that you know us, that your presence is constant with us, unwavering, unchanging, and that your presence is intimate, that Lord God, you are God seated on your throne, but you are also our Lord and Savior, and our friend. We thank you for these truths this morning, and we ask for your showers of love and blessings upon each of our lives, and we receive these in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us read today the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 12 through 19. And so I'd like to invite you to open your Bible or your Bible app and go with me to Exodus chapter 33, and we will read verse 12 through 19. And it reads in the following manner, continuing on in our press pressing on series and today's theme being known by name. We're leaving uh, Paul now and going to the Old 
Testament where we find Moses speaking with the Lord and the Lord speaking with Moses. And this is what is going on. So we're going to start in verses 12. Read verses 12 through 19, starting with verse 12. And it reads in the following manner. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, as we continue in our Pressing On series, we go to the book of Exodus where we have a leader on the edge, where we read Moses and his moment of speaking to God and God speaking back to Moses. And Moses is a leader on the edge. And he is saying to God in verse 12, See, Lord, you have said to me, Bring up this people. You called me. You told me what I needed to do. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. In other words, you haven't given me the big picture. You haven't given me the game plan exactly. You've, you've called me, but you haven't told me who you're going to send with me or how I'm going to do this. But he goes on to say, yet, yet, you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found favor in my sight. Moses is a leader on the edge because he knows that God has called him, but God hasn't given him the big picture, the big game plan. But yet he knows one thing, that he is known by name and that God's presence goes with him, that he has found favor in the sight of the Lord. Today, in the times we're living in, There are a lot of people on the edge. There are a lot of leaders on the edge. From our political leaders, to our state and local leaders during the pandemic, to church leaders, to some of our pastors, because we are all living in unprecedented times. In times we weren't prepared for. In times that we know that God had called us to, God has called us to be the church. God has called us to be his people. God has called us to love him and serve him and obey him. But we haven't had the game plan exactly, have we? We haven't received the big picture. For the last several months, we have sort of wandered as the Israelites were. And so there have been people on the edge. We have felt on edge at times. And there have been leaders on the edge. Perhaps we have questioned what God is doing. Perhaps we have questioned our call. Perhaps we have questioned the future. Because the season that we have been living in has been difficult. And Moses found himself living in such a season as well. A difficult season. He found himself engaging in leadership of God's people during a difficult season. And many of us, pastors and laity, have found ourselves in similar situations. 
leading God's people in a difficult season. Trying to press on while keeping up the faith and keeping everyone around us calm and content enough to realize that not all of us are going to be happy or content all the time and we're going to wrestle with our feelings and our emotions and our thoughts and our anxiety and our fear and our doubt and that no matter how well trained we might be or how many years we have served in the church or gone to church or have been followers of Christ as with Moses there is a creeping suspicion that we weren't given enough information for this monumental pilgrimage that has been the year 2020, that has been the year of the pandemic, that has been doing worship a new way, that has been having life-changing events happen in one's life. That creeping suspicion that we weren't given enough help or wisdom or insight or grace or strength or whatever it might be that a leader needs or that a person needs, that a follower of Christ needs to press on. But yet, there is a yet in that first verse. It's such an important word. Yet. There's a pause, there's a hesitation there, there's an invitation to rethink, perhaps. Yet is a word of reversal. On one side of the yet is hesitation and uncertainty. Moses speaking to God, I don't know who is on my side, I don't know who will support me. I know that you've called me, but you haven't given me the full picture, the game plan. But then the yet brings another truth, a deeper truth. You, my God. You, my God. My hope, my salvation, my help in ever-present trouble have said to me that you know me by name. That you know me by name. And that I have also found favor in your sight. Those are two important things for us to remember for such a difficult time as this. That as we press on, we are both known by God. And we have found favor in the sight of the Lord. Again that we are known by name and that we have found favor in the sight of the Lord. Elmwood Buen Samaritano, we are known by name. Today you can insert your name and proclaim that you are known by name. Elmwood Buen Samaritano, you have found favor with the Lord and today you can insert your name and know that you have found favor with the Lord no matter the circumstance. God is with us. And we are known by name. And we have found favor in God's sight. As Moses goes on in his conversation with the Lord, he says to to God, Now if I have found favor in your sight, if this is true, (laughs) what you've just said to me, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He's sort of imploring to God. God, if I've truly found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know those ways, so that I may know what to do and and find favor in your sight truly. And don't forget this nation is your people. It sounds like some of our (laughs) pastors and, and leaders today certainly sounds like me. Lord God, if I have truly found favor in your sight, show me your ways. Be with me during this season. Give me comfort. Give me strength. 
Give me peace. Help me lead your people. Help me walk alongside your people and find favor in your sight, Lord God, in the midst of such an unprecedented time and season. And consider, too, that the people that I love and care for, my church, my family, my friends, are your people also. I can relate to Moses this morning. He was seeking God's presence. And presence is what we seek. Presence is what we need to be seeking today more than ever. God's presence in particular. To know and be known can get us through a lot. That assurance that we are known by God. That we know God, but we are known by God. Our deepest fears and doubt and insecurities are known by God as well as our deepest faith and hope and desires and dreams and peace. To know and be known can get us through a lot, through the difficult days ahead, through the complicated questions and bone-crushing rejection or the weighty issues of our time that overwhelm us on a regular basis what it is to walk in the confidence that we are known by God, that God walks with us as we go, is the first step on our journey. And I think that's why Moses, in speaking with the Lord at this very time of his journey, says to God, God, show me your ways. Be with me. Asks God for God's presence. And in verse 14, God says to Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. How many of us this morning can receive that word for ourselves and hear God's voice say to us, my presence will go with you. I will be with you. I am with you. My presence is with you. My presence is with you and insert your name this morning. And I will give you rest. I read that last night and I thought, Lord, I need that rest. For my body, my soul, my heart, my spirit, my mind, I need that rest. And I receive that rest in Jesus' name. Church, this morning I pray that one of our first realizations is that we are always in the presence of God. It is the nature of God to be present. There is a Christian author by the name of Richard Rohr, and he writes this about the presence of God. We cannot attain the presence of God because we're already in the presence of God. What's absent is awareness. Little do we realize that God's love is maintaining us in existence with every breath we take. As we take another, it means that God is choosing us now and now and now and now. I love that because it introduces to us an image of God's presence as always being with us as we always being in God's presence and sometimes what we lack is awareness of that presence or awareness that we are already in the presence of God and and that it's God's love that is maintaining us in existence in God's presence or before God's presence with every breath we take so if you and I are breathing this morning It is because we are in God's presence. And God is choosing us today. Now and now and now and now. God chooses to love us. God chooses to comfort us. God chooses to embrace us wherever we are. In our brokenness, in our sadness, in our fear, in our doubt, in our anxiety, wherever we are. And God chooses to celebrate with us, to bring us joy, 
to bring us hope, to bring us peace wherever we are today. That is the God of Moses. That is the God that was with Moses during this difficult part of the journey of Moses as a leader and God's people. Verse 15. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. Moses understood how important the presence of God was and the awareness of that presence was. And he says to God, God, if your presence is not going with us, then do not carry us away from this place because we need you. We need your presence. And I have felt that way the last eight months. At the start of this, in the middle of the season that we're living in, and in the last two months. Lord, if your presence is not with me, do not move us forward. Lord, if your presence is not with me, how do I press on? Lord God, be with us. Be with me. Be with Elma de Buen Samaritano that we may press on together has been my prayer the last two weeks. Verse 16. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? Lord God, unless you go with us, will I know we have truly found favor in your sight. In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. The Lord repeats to Moses that he is known by name and that he has found favor in God's sight. Church, you are known by name and you have found favor in God's sight today. Moses and later Joshua, his protege, knew that to become aware of the presence of God, you must spend time with God. And so as you read the text further, the text says that God and Moses spent a lot of time in conversation, much like friends, meaning that they enjoyed one another's company. Do you enjoy God's company today? Because he enjoys yours. They had a relationship from beginning to end. When we read scripture, there is no denying that God and Moses had a relationship It could be contentious at times. They wrestled with one another, God with Moses and Moses with God, for it was Moses that broke the original stone tablets. But they had relationship. The usual stuff that friends do. And this time, in this scripture, Moses begins by saying to God, God, you have brought me with your people. You have called me to your people, but you haven't given me the game plan. I, 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 I haven't been given the big picture. And the Lord replies, you are known by name and you have found favor in my sight. Moses is a bit stunned by this turn in the conversation and he whispers to God in the following verse. In verse 18, Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. This is after the Lord repeats to Moses that he is known by name and has found favor in his sight. Moses replies to the Lord, Show me your glory, I pray. So what did he ask for? For a light show, for thunder and lightning or something else? He asked for God's glory. And church, to end this morning, how do we give God glory? How do we acknowledge God's glory? By how we live. It is by how we live. And and sometimes that can be praise and worship, but mostly we glorify God by living as God would have us live. 
Moses wanted something tangible. He wanted to see God perhaps walking around, living the way that Moses was supposed to live. In short, thousands of years before time, Moses was asking for Jesus. He wanted God to put on flesh and come and hang out with him, come and guide him, come and sustain him for the task that he was feeling too inadequate for, to lead the people. He was sure he didn't want to be led by anyone else except God, but he wanted a glimpse of how it was supposed to be, how he was supposed to be in God. He wanted Jesus in short. And sometimes we do the same. We ask for the same as we await Christ's return. There's a song that that says, In the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. In the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. We're asking for glory when we sing that song, when we pray that prayer. Give me Jesus. Give me a glimpse of how I'm supposed to walk. Give me a hint of how I'm to do this task that you've given me to do, God, when I know it's beyond my ability to do, to press on, whether it's parenting or pastoring or teaching or leading or living in love with neighbor and family. None of it is within my capabilities to do none of it so God says this to Moses as Moses shares this very sentiment with God our final verse this morning and he said God said verse 19 I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name the Lord And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And brothers and sisters in Christ, aren't we thankful that God has been gracious to us? Aren't we glad today that God has shown mercy to us? And that it is through the Lord's name, it is in Jesus' name, that we can press on. For it is God's goodness that passes before us. It is the blessing of God. God blessed Moses on that mountaintop. Just as God blesses us anytime we let God's Spirit fill us. Fill us with goodness. God says to us, you can be who I created you to be. Filled with my goodness. See, we are so used to thinking these are attributes that we generate ourselves. We think that if we work hard enough or we believe enough, then we will become good. But that isn't how it works. It is a gift. It is the spirit at work within us. And we let it work within us. Because we know that without it, we fall short of who we want to be, let alone who God can equip us to be. And so we invite the Spirit to bring us God's goodness because we need it, because we want it. We want to be there. We want to be that, that something more, that something new. We want to love the way that God has loved us in the goodness of God. The God who knows us by name, we can press on this morning. We can press on as a community of faith, press on as the body of Christ who seeks to transform the world by making disciples of Jesus Christ. We press on through God's goodness, through God's grace or graciousness as verse 19 reads through God's mercy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. El Buen Samaritano, it has been a blessing 
to be with you this morning. I pray that as you have heard the word of God this morning, as the Spirit speaks to you, as you are called to read Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 19, and go back to that this morning, I invite you to go back to it as we continue to press on through God's goodness and grace and mercy. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father and precious God, we thank you so much for your word today, for your spirit of hope and life and joy and encouragement. We thank you, Lord God, for speaking to us today through your word, for speaking to me. And Lord God, we pray today as we move forward that it would be your presence among us and within us and around us that we would become aware of your presence that we may hear your voice say to us although we may not have the big picture although we may not have the game plan we know we are called we know we are called and so we want to hear your voice assure us today that we are known by name and that we have found favor in your sight. And because of that, you have promised to be with us in a presence that is constant and faithful and tangible and intimate because we know you through Jesus. We know you through your Holy Spirit. And so it is in the name of Jesus through your Holy Spirit that we pray today that you would help us press on. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Un muere buen samaritano. God bless you. Showers of love and blessings. We hope to see you next week, 10 a.m. in English, 11 a.m. in Spanish.